Hey everyone, I'm Meher Bhagat and we are back with yet another session of Success Story. And today we have with us Arjun Suda and he has just been placed at Amazon. Congratulations, Arjun. Thank you, Meher. Okay, so Arjun, let's have a brief introduction of yourself first. Okay, yeah, so my name is Arjun and I just completed my BTEC from NCSE from JP Institute of Information Technology in Noida. And uh, currently I'm working as a software development engineer at Amazon Hyderabad. Cool. Okay, so Arjun, about this interview, what was the hiring process? Okay, so Amazon came to our campus for hiring interns during the month of November 2019. And okay. the interview process, the interview didn't have any bar. Uh, all streams are eligible and there was no CGP criteria to sit in the interview. Uh, there were three rounds. Uh, there was one online round and then two face-to-face -face interviews. Okay, um, so what were the questions that were asked in these rounds of the interview? Yeah, okay. So let's begin with the online round first. So the online round was held on Metal Platform. Uh, approximately like 600 students appeared for this round. And we had two coding questions and 28 MCQs which, were, which we had to solve. So the MCQs were on the topics of C++ and they had OOPs and uh, they asked concepts uh, about theoretical concepts as well like OS networking and TBMS. And there were like error-based questions where we had to find the error, what was the output of this piece of code, questions like that. Okay. So there were 28 MCQs and then two coding questions. So the coding questions, everyone got different coding questions, but the ones which I got were maximum contiguous sub array sum. And then uh, the other question was to find the GCD of an array. Okay. So basically, almost all of the students solved the two coding questions, uh, but the major uh, differentiator was MCQs. So okay. we had to have maximum number of MCQs correct, uh, then those students were proceeded to the next round. Cool. And uh, the next round was a face-to-face -face interview round. Approximately 120 students uh, appeared for this round. And there was interviews from Amazon came to our campus only uh, to conduct this interview. Uh, yeah. And due to some shortage of time, it was a situation like we had one interview and two interviews. So, okay. so Basically, it was a knockoff round kind of thing they were having. Like they would ask both of the students the same question, and the one which gets most number of questions right would proceed to the next round. So this interview started, and the interview just gave a brief introduction about himself. And there's this standard interview question like, "Tell me about yourself." He asked us that, and then after that, there was no discussion on the resume. Uh, we just went straight to the pen and paper round, uh, where we have to attempt the question on a piece of paper, and it has to be production ready code. We can't make any bugs. We have to, you know, provide the solution in one go. So okay. things like doing the dry run and being sure of the solution were necessary in this round. So the questions asked to me were, uh, there was first question was uh, sliding window maximum. Uh, so we have to give the maximum of all sub arrays in a window of size K. So I first gave the O and square approach, which was a brute force approach. And then the interview asked me to optimize my approach, which I used double ended Q and I used STL to implement the double ended Q logic. And he was satisfied with my approach as it was O of N. And okay. the same question was asked to the other student as well. Uh, okay. Then there was a second question was there, which was the iterative post order traversal of a tree. But the catch was we have to use only one stack. So mm -hmm. this was also a fairly standard question, but they make it made it a uh, little bit difficult by adding the condition that we have to use only one stack. So okay. I took some time and then I answered this question as well. After this, the interview was over and we were called in for the uh, next round. Uh, when the results were out. So the next round, uh, approximately like 50 students were left uh, for the last round. And this was also a face-to-face -face interview, but now one interview and one interview. So mm. it was like a normal interview. So this round also started uh, with a brief discussion about the resume and what are technologies that we have learned in college and uh, internships, if any. So I told them about my internship experience and then we moved to the pen and paper round. Uh, mm. okay. And here also two questions were asked. Uh, one question was a standard one dimensional DP question. Uh, and it was that uh, like we are at the beginning of an array and we can take jumps either in the step of one or array of I. And we have to reach the end of the array and we have to return the minimum number of jumps required to reach at the end of the array. So this is a standard DP problem. And I did this by doing first the recursion and then adding memoization to it. So I was able to solve this and the interviewer was uh, satisfied with the solution. But the one thing where I struck, like it was a low moment for me in that interview was I was not able to find the correct base case for this interview. Like I wrote the solution and then I uh, showed it to the interviewer and then he caught the base case. 
so i was thinking out loud during the whole interview i was like explaining my approach and like how would i solve this question rather than just writing it down on the paper so the mm-hmm. interview was also you know engaging with me like helping me find the correct solution and you know suggesting me different ways like okay think of this case uh, you might have missed that one and then i was able mm-hmm. to solve that question so cool. and the second Great. question was that given a string find the first non repeating character in that string string so yeah i discussed this approach first brute force approach and then i gave the optimized solution for this so the question was pretty easy but the thing which was difficult was to write the production ready code in one go because the implementation of this question was a little mm-hmm. bit tricky so i did that and the interviewer was very satisfied with the approach and then later you know there is this one thing which every interviewer asks at the end of interview like do you have any questions for me so yeah uh, that is always there such question at this this point everyone i would advise if anyone is watching the video that always ask some question like ask like, what team you are in like what is expected from an intern at amazon or what would be my role like or what would be my day to day activities like any random question which you can ask you should ask that and but don't ask for the feedback of your interview uh, yeah that was then and uh, yeah uh, i got out of the interview room i looked up the solutions on geeks geeks and i had given the exact same solutions which were there so i was pretty satisfied that okay i can clear this round now and yeah this was the last round we were told and then offers were released at the end of the day cool that's great that's great so you talked about the you know there were certain questions regarding you know from your resume so are there any advice in the tips that you like to give to you know, to the viewers ki how should they prepare you know uh, make their cv and for the interview how should they prepare themselves yeah so two things like the resume should always be a one page resume and mm-hmm. it shouldn't be a very flashy resume like don't add too much colors or your pictures on the resume like unless you are applying for a design job so right. there is this template on google if you just google dd cv uh, you would find this template and you can edit that and make your own resume it's a very crisp and neat and clean resume add that mm-hmm. add your projects to your resume uh, i added only two projects to my resume uh, for which i was completely sure that i have made these projects by my hand i have sufficient knowledge and i can answer any question if they ask and okay. one of the projects which i had on the resume uh, it was a live project i deployed it so i could show it to the interview on my mobile that okay this is the website which i have built and it is working i did that in my first interview as well uh, because i noticed that they were only asking very few questions from the resume they were not keen mm-hmm. at what you have written in your resume or what projects you have made so i made it mm-hmm. as a point to you know bring it up front from my end to show like okay i have done this also so yeah uh, main advice from my side to build a resume would be to use a nice template uh, which is professional and uh, very not very flashy So, how did you prepare for this interview? What so, preparation uh, that you did? Hmm. so for preparing for this uh, interview, like I was not specifically preparing for entry at Amazon. I was in general preparing for my placement season. So okay. this all started at the end of second year. Uh, I joined Coding Blocks uh, for data structures and algorithm launchpad course in C plus plus, and I did hmm. a classroom course for two months during my summer break. So that gave me, you know, a basic understanding of how things are done in an interview like we were given tips about how to uh, you know uh, approach an interview or like what all questions can be asked that and that gave me a clear defined path like okay this is to be followed and organized content structure was given which helped me in you know then after the course i was able to carry that forward and improve my problem solving skills so i solved a lot of problems after that on interview bit and lead code hacker and websites like that a lot of students also have this conception in their mind like to get a job at a fan company competitive programming is mm-hmm. necessary yeah but i don't you know usually agree with that i am not a competitive coder myself uh, i didn't solve a lot of contests on code chef or code forces but i have done sufficient number of problems on interview bit or lead code uh, mm-hmm. which improved my problem solving skills okay. uh, i wouldn't say that competitive programming is not necessary it it enhances your problem solving skills but if we look at uh, interviews on campus interviews i think if you just have problem solving skills and work on trying to solve a lot of number of problems then you can also crack those interviews okay all right so um any tips that you like to give to the viewers who are from you know not from tier 1 colleges but from tier 2 and tier 3 and they cannot apply for the on campus you know interviews so how should they yeah, go about so now the situations have 
you know, uh, uh, with the corona and everything, like a lot of companies won't be wasting campuses and uh, virtual hiring would be there. So mm -hmm. uh, the tip which I would like to give to the students would be like to use LinkedIn as much as possible. Uh, okay. Make um, useful connections uh, who can help you get referrals to top companies, uh, your college seniors, ask them for referrals, prepare for the interviews. And then, you know, after the referral, it is very easy to get a call. Uh, so the first thing would be to, you know, have a strong presence on LinkedIn. And apart from that, there are other programs. Like there is also this common notion that mass recruiters are not good. Like they pay below average for a BTEC student. So there are certain competitions like Hack Within Fee for Infosys. You can try that. And there is TCS Code Beta competition. So if okay. you would appear for these competitions, like they don't uh, filter out students by the college of tier one or tier two. Everyone can apply in these contests. And they pay good. They give eight LPA. So, and there are other programs like for diversity hiring, like especially if you uh, are in a, uh, if you are a girl, then you can apply for uh, Amazon ACMS program, Amazon uh, Wow program, or similar programs like Microsoft Codes. And many companies like Adobe, Morgan Stanley, they do diversity hirings, so you can apply for them. Okay. Yeah. All right. Great. Okay. So, any projects that you worked upon, as you mentioned earlier, and any hackathons? So yeah, uh, I also did another course from Coding Blocks only. I did a course with Python, uh, web development with Python and Django. So Django is a server side uh, framework which we use to uh, develop websites. So uh, I built a project, I built a blog application uh, using Django, and then I deployed it to production via Heroku. So that gave me, you know, an upper edge in the interview. I could show that to the interviewer that this is a project I have done, and you know, you can also as a user use that project. Uh, so that was one of the project. And then there was another project which I did in blockchain. Uh, I, I have, I had an elective in my college as blockchain. So we did a project on blockchain where we built a sim basic Ethereum application uh, to collect votes during a vote, voting process. So basically it was, the idea was to decentralize the voting process and make it more transparent for users. So that was another project which I had on my resume. So these were the projects which I had complete knowledge about, like, okay, what have I done? What I was set for these projects, and I can explain it to the interviewer uh, if given asked a question. Cool, that's great. That's great. Okay, so you have already joined Amazon, right? So how's it going over there? Okay, so I joined Amazon in the month of February as an intern. So okay. I joined the Amazon Hyderabad campus, and uh, the initial impressions were very good. Like obviously, when you join a fan company, you have certain expectations from the company. So. Mm. They, they pamper you a lot. They pay for your flights, they pay for your hotels, they call you to the campuses, mm -hmm. and then you are given seven star accommodations for weeks. So yeah, the experience has been good. And coming to the work end, the work here is also very good. You get to work on cutting edge technologies. Like uh, I work, I'm in the Alexa team, and we build services okay. for ML engineers to improve the Alexa's AI engine, basically. So okay. we use all kinds of technologies like AWS services, like we use infrastructure as a code and then build upon those services to reduce the manual bottlenecks in the pipeline. And then we use automation to increase the manual effort there. So as a intern, my project was to automate a process of cycle creation. And eventually that led to saving about 12 hours of manual effort per week. So that was a big boost for our team. And yeah, the work is very good. Good stuff. Okay. so. Any last advice and tips that you'd like to give to the viewers? Yeah, so let's talk about placement season only. Uh, placement mm -hmm. season is a ride of emotions. Like a lot of students who have less CGPA also get placed in very good companies. And sometimes the students who have very much high CGPA, uh, they also don't get placed. So don't be bogged down if you have a less CG. Uh, just work hard on your skills. Uh, be confident in the interview. Uh, your body language matters a lot. So always be calm. Mm -hmm and just engage the interviewer in a conversation like okay this is how we can approach this problem and don't just start writing the solution on a piece of paper practice on a pen and paper beforehand and one more thing that a lot of interviewers sometimes ask puzzles in the interview so okay. make sure to you know check some puzzles on inter uh, youtube and we have an idea about that right like, okay if this puzzle is asked in the interview this is how we solve that and then obviously pretend in the interview that you don't know the solution okay so having said that um any topics that you like to you know highlight key these are the topics that one should prepare so uh, for data structures and algorithms i would say that stacks queues trees are must must for every student and then basic 
topics like mm-hmm. arrays like everybody thinks that arrays is a very easy topic but if you go into depth a lot of tricky questions can be asked on arrays and uh, for dynamic programming i would say like solve the basic problems of dynamic programming like 1d mm-hmm. dp problems and 2d dp problems and that should be suffice for an on campus interview and apart from that also have a knowledge of theoretical topics like os networking uh, and dbms and hoops all right great so thank you so much arjun for joining us today and sharing your experience with us and the viewers thank you so much and guys i hope you like the video and for more such videos subscribe to our channel thank you Th- thank you for having me bye bye